is a New Zealand pop sensation, pop star who broke onto the scene around about 2013 uh, with her massive, massive single, Royals. It was massive. This song was inescapable. It, I, you just never didn't hear it. It was just everywhere. Such a huge breakout single for an artist that was completely unknown before it. It's quite rare to see actually where, you know, an artist just has one of the biggest songs of the year and they're like, you know, 16 years old and it's basically like their first ever song. <laughs> it, 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 it's not something you see very often. It happens occasionally, I suppose, but it just seemed like she was immediately like springboarded into the mainstream with a pretty unique approach to pop music. I know a lot of people don't like that song or even like her as an artist, but I think it's pretty fair to say that her approach was definitely different to her, you know, counterparts, her peers. There wasn't really anything in the mainstream that really sounded like this. It really was far from overproduced. It was, if anything, underproduced. It was an incredibly minimal track that was also pretty catchy with a lot of angst too. She's obviously, you know, trying to speak truth to uh, mainstream approaches and, you know, the, the current trends amongst the youth. It came across as a bit bitter, but at the same time, it just kind of worked somehow. Bizarrely though, she took a very different approach with the next album. It didn't feel half as fresh as what she th did the first time around, because I would even say she actually had a bit of an influence on many artists who came after her, who went for this kind of slower approach to their music. Um, not to say that Lord was the first ever person to ever do it ever, obviously, but I think because of how popular it was, I think some other artists tried to copycatting that sound. And melodrama just did not make an impact at all in mainstream, like in the mainstream at all. Critically, it was a huge success. It got Grammy nominations. Um, it, it's a beloved album. I think it's a good album too. I do think it's good, but um, she just didn't have any hits from this one. It was really weird. I, 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 you'd, you could argue that the tracks were more leaning to pop than anything she'd done before, and yet none of it just made an impact, which I found kind of crazy. So her career's had a bit of a weird trajectory in that sense, but she's still putting out music that people care about. She's got a huge fan base. It's just that the music that she's putting out just doesn't hit the charts anymore, which I find quite strange, but I don't really know how to explain it. Now, if anything is gonna be far removed from that context, it's gotta be this new album. I think if anything, she's steering even further away from the masses and i just think the reception to this album so far and going forward is gonna be pretty lukewarm even amongst her core fan base i could see many people being put off by this including me to be honest i find this album to be quite underwhelming i've given it plenty of listens at this point Maybe it's going to be one that I need to go back to further down the line because that sometimes can happen with albums. At first, you're not sure on it. Later down the line, you give it another try and you actually think it's better than you remember. Maybe it's going to be one of those albums, but for now, this is too minimal, really. And I was saying that it worked for a debut, but uh, eight years later, this kind of minimal style that she's going for this time around is just too low impact. One thing I've got to talk about uh, that I need to address is at the moment there's just far too many artists, particularly female singer-songwriters I will say, that are going for this like whispery, like soft vocal style that's just like got nothing really going for it. There's just no emotion coming through in the way that they're singing. Um, I, I had this issue with the Billie Eilish album. I, to be fair, I think it was worse on that album, but there's a ton of indie artists that are doing this too. I couldn't quite get with it when Phoebe Bridges was doing it, Lucy Dacus, Jesus Christ, the list goes on and on and on. The one thing I just like from a singer, the one, the one thing I want, the one thing I look for is just expression, like just express your voice. Sometimes, that's all you really need to change a song that would completely make it from being mediocre to at least good because that's just what you want. You want a singer to just be so characterful and animated and, and lively 
And you don't need it all the time. If you're doing a ballad, a slow track, fair enough, you're going to tone things down. But considering this entire album is like half of it being these slow, moody tracks, I can't really find a place where I'd get into these. It starts off well. The Path, Solar Power, they're two solid tracks. I think the similar structure that both of them opt for is a little uh, predictable because they both start off a bit acoustic -y, um, you know, a bit kind of like uh, soft and then they build into a, a brighter ending. They both do a similar thing, but they actually work for what they're doing. The peppy acoustic tone really works and I think her voice works really well for the path as well. Again, like I say, by the end, the instrumental swells, it works really well. Her voice kind of um, offsets it in a nice way too. A bit confused with the saviour complex thing that she's got going on at the end of the track though. Um, not entirely sure if I'm missing the context here. I'm not entirely sure if there's something that I just am not aware of, but I wouldn't really think anyone views her like that. Um, unless again, someone can tell me that I'm missing something. But yeah, aside from that, I think the track's good. So the power's grown on me a little bit. I think this one is actually quite catchy in places. I think the vocal approach again is soft, but she's actually developing it, I think, in a nice way. And then by the end with the, the, the crescendo, it, it sounds really good. I think that could have come earlier in the song, but regardless, it does sound good. And then beyond this, there is like a run of tracks that feel like they're all doing the same thing. I mean, there's a few breaks in between, but like, it, it's, it, it's pretty, pretty tiring at this point. California feels more like something she'd have wrote at 16. Like, it's weird hearing this kind of lyrical track way later in her career when it felt like her debut and melodrama were incredibly mature albums considering how young she was when she wrote the songs. Like, there was just something so adult about what she was writing about on those tracks and yet this one feels like she's gone backwards and it feels like you know this is something she should have wrote at 15. To add to it as well like the falsetto that she's going for in this one just doesn't work for me. She does it a few times across this album actually. She'll like replace the whispering with a falsetto as if that's supposed to be some kind of like you know dynamic shift in what she's doing with her voice and it just never really feels like it's that much different or that much better. Zoned at the Nail Salon is just a track that again is far too low impact. I just cannot get with this approach that she's going for here. Musically to me this one is just so uninspired like even if there was an interesting theme at the core of the song it's just completely undersold by how she's singing the lyrics like everything just feels so monotone. The entire track is just flat like it goes nowhere it feels like she falls into a pattern with it as well when you get to fallen fruit it's like okay this is what we're doing now like it's not like you know she's giving us a couple of tracks that do this and then she gives us something new it's almost like she's just settling into it which is a shame because like i say the first two tracks there was potential to take this into an interesting direction it's once again far too light vocally um, I'm just really getting nothing out of this at all. And it's at this point, I'm thinking there's never going to be a place for this album in my sort of library or listening habits because I just don't think the vocals are doing enough for me. I at least like the instrumental on this one, though. It, it opts for a different vibe compared to many of the other slower tracks. Um, I at least appreciate that. It's way more psychedelic in its sound. In fact, that guitar that really starts to seep into the track towards the end reminds me of something like George Harrison would have done on his All Things Must Pass album, which is a pretty mad compliment, really. That's the only, like, glimmer of the track, the spark, the only one saving grace, really. Everything else about the track is just like all the other ones. Man With An Axe at least has an interesting lyrical arc with, you know, the idea of a man kind of taking you down 
because of the way they've treated you. Pretty cool, actually, the way it's sort of framed. Feels quite Phoebe Bridges-ish, actually, with how it's, you know, framed lyrically and how she's singing, uh, especially how she's singing, actually. I do wonder if she was listening to punish her when she was writing these tracks, possibly. But it really just goes absolutely nowhere. And this run for four songs, I swear, they're the same. They're all the same. I really struggle to separate the differences between this one, Domino's, Big Star, and Leader of a New Regime. The only thing that's different really is the lyrics. I mean, they're very different to one another, Big Star, more talking about fame and things like that, Leader of a New Regime. You can sort of get where that one's going, but Musically, they're, they're, they're just, they're copy and pasted. I, I can't pick out anything different. Why is the album being taken in this direction? Like, you, you, you can't have this many kind of acoustic ballad -y tracks without a, a vocal style that, that, that kind of lures you in, that interests you. You can't have the instrumentals that just completely sound beige and wallpapery and just very uninteresting like there's got to be something you've you've got to do something with the songs just listen to the door jar ep that i reviewed earlier this year it, it, it sure there's slower tracks not every track is a banger you know you don't need to make bangers every time i'm not telling lord to you know become the new david getter and give us some club banging beats i'm not trying to say that that's not what i'm doing at all here but Listen to something like Dora Jar. I mean, she has an expression full voice. Expression full? It might not be a word, but she, you know, she emotes, she slows things down in the right places. The instrumentals always sound really good. They're dynamic. There's just so many layers to how the tracks sound. It's not just one note from start to finish. Listen to anything that Big Thief or Adrian Lenko has done in her solo capacity. Like, again, there's just more to the tracks. There's more power behind the vocals. There's more power behind the instrumentals. They sell the songs. There's just nothing being sold here. Lord is just settling into one style and going with it for every song. She's just plowing through doing the same thing. At least I can say Secrets from a Girl is a bit different, a bit more upbeat, I guess you could say. I mean, it still sounds something that would like, you know, be in a montage of a One Tree Hill episode in like 2005. But aside from that, it, it, it at least sounds pretty good. I don't really know why the spoken word skit thing is there at the end. It really adds nothing to the track. It just wastes time, to be honest. But I, I, look, there's a lot of things I don't really get with this album, so I suppose I can take a skit that feels a bit out of place over some of the other tracks. I like Mood Ring 2. It sounds a bit millennial with the lyrics. It honestly sounds like something a Tumblr user would write, honestly. But aside from that, it sounds good. And I appreciate Ricky, Rick the Lie, who made the comparison to Natalie Imbruglia's Torn. I can kind of see that as well, to be fair. It does have a 2000s acoustic pop jam hit that would have topped the charts vibe to it, to be fair, I, I, I'll take this, I take this. I think she sounds good on this track too. It breaks up the monotonous flow of the entire previous like four or five songs. It's a catchy little tune. It feels like she's trying something a bit different as well. There isn't anything like this on this album or even previous albums, to be fair. So I will take this one. But as an overall album, I just get so little from it. It just has no guts to it at all. It's just too light. Like, it, it, it's too low impact and light. Honestly, it's a bit of an odd direction. I mean, fair enough, you can at least say every album of hers has something different to offer. This is nothing like her debut. This is nothing like melodrama. Melodrama and pure heroin are nothing like one another either. You can say that there's variety in this, and cool that she's trying new things, I commend that, but I think she has taken things in the wrong direction. I don't think this approach is going to last too long. I, I, it doesn't feel like it has longevity to it. She's a better singer than this. Like, she's, she's a better singer than this, right? Like, if you're a fan of this album, can you at least admit that, like, liability has a way better vocal performance than any track on this, and yet you'd expect the vocal performances to be the shining 
aspect of the album because they're 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 slower songs they're mostly ballady esque tracks and yet none of the tracks have any vocal performance that makes me go wow did it not one hit hard don't get me wrong she's not like the best singer ever and i know that she probably doesn't even think of herself in that kind of way anyway but she's a better singer than this she's she is yeah i got i gotta go five out of ten this is quite a letdown i just struggle with this one honestly but let me know your thoughts in the comments am i going crazy am i missing something here is there something that i'm just not giving enough credit to i don't know i don't know um everything just feels too empty like the production isn't that impressive there's just really le very little that impresses me about this thank you for watching though hopefully you agree or at least understand where i'm coming from hopefully you can subscribe if you haven't already that would be great thank you for watching do have a good day and goodbye